Good morning, everybody. Welcome to church. Come on, let's stand to our feet. We're going to praise our God. He's worthy. Amen. Come on. Sing this out. We worship. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging seas. My God. Man. 
praise this morning. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise today, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How good it is to be in church today together, praising and worshiping our Heavenly Father with a sense of a sense of gratitude and a sense of expectation in this place today. A real sense that we reminded again of all that God has done for us and all that He's brought to us. And I love that song that we we lay our crowns down at His feet. What is what 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 does that mean for us today? Do you know what it means? This we come to a place of surrender again. But we say, Lord, have it all, have all of me, have all that I have, Lord, I give it to you. What a great place to start with in your heart. And I believe that as we do that, as we sing that song with, the, with all of our heart, I'll tell you what, God begins to move through surrender. He begins to move through surrender. Just for a moment, why don't you just begin to just worship him, just where you are, just begin to thank him for his goodness and whatever that means for you laying down whatever crowns it is this morning just just right where you are just begin to thank him for his goodness that's it just press the press the pause button for a moment and begin to thank him be reminded today Thank you, Lord. done for us we're so grateful Lord and we ask today Lord that you would be with us that you would walk with us Lord we thank you for your presence thank you that you did everything for our freedom Lord we thank you that when we pray today Lord we know that you hear us And in a moment, church, I'd love us to pray together. And, you know, my heart this morning is for us to pray for, for our relationships and our friendships. And we're going through this amazing series, The Best of Friends here in Church Life. And I think it's so important that we pray for one another, that we pray for our relationships and our friendships, whatever that might look like. You, mean, you may need God to move in one of those in your own life this morning. Or you may know somebody else that needs a move of God in their life. And we have these prayer cards here that people fill in every single week. And, and perhaps today, God's prompting you to pray for somebody or just to pray for the needs of his people. And I'd love to invite you this morning as we pray together to begin to pray into that. So right where you are, why don't we, why don't we begin to pray together? Look, that God will bring friendships, new friendships, reconciliation and healing and Come on, begin to pray this morning that God would grow His church through life-giving relationships and friendships. Lord, we thank You, Lord, that You're moving, God. Lord, we thank You for the gift of friendship, Lord. And we pray, we pray right across our church, Lord, across Lighthouse, that You continue to strengthen, bring unity, goodness and grace to friendships, Lord. Lord, we pray we see new friendships blossom and grow, Father. Lord, for friendships needing change, Lord, and transformation, the Holy Spirit, you do the work. You bring about the miracles that need to happen, Lord. Lord, we thank you, God, that you are the God of the impossible. That when we ask God, you can move and you do move. So, Lord, we stand together at Lighthouse Church today. And we pray, God, that you'd, we'd see increase in our groups, God. We'd see encounters with great friends, Lord, as they pursue you together, Father, as we spur one another on, God. Lord, I pray that you'd bring strength to us, God, and community together in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen. Give God some praise this morning. So good to be together. So important that we continue to pray for one another, 
Pray for our connections, pray for our friendships and our relationships. And we know, we all know that through life-giving friendships, we're pushed forward into the things of God that we're able to be both encouraged and the encourager in our friendships. How good. Well, welcome to church this morning. We are Lighthouse Church. Uh, <laughs> one church in three locations. We're here at Bridgman Downs, if you didn't know that already. I guess you do know that because you're here. And we're at Inner City and we're at Springfield. And it's so good that across all our three locations today, we're praising and worshiping God together. We're building, building community together. And uh, so we just wanted to say a huge welcome to you. And if this is your first time, or maybe you've been coming for a couple of weeks, we wanted to give you a warm welcome as well. But just before we do that, I'm gonna ask you to do something super bold this morning. And if you are new or you've been coming for a couple of weeks, we'd love to get to know you. So I'm gonna ask you to very boldly give me a quick wave and the Next Steps team will come and give you a gift while the rest of us welcome you into church this morning. Come on, welcome our guests. If you're new, give us a wave. Hey guys, welcome to church this morning. Hey, how you doing? Welcome to church. So good to have you here with you. Come on, give them all a warm welcome. Come on. How good. Always great to see people join the family here at Lighthouse Church. You are so welcome. We have been expecting we, you. We love seeing new people added to our location here. We do, don't we? We absolutely love it. There is opportunity for you to connect if that's what you're looking for. We have midweek groups and all kinds of things that we can invite you to and that we believe that life is best done together and so welcome to church this morning but for now I'm going to give you 60 seconds and it's only 60 seconds only 60 seconds say hi to those around you Gosh, you're a rowdy lot. I love it. Well, you can grab your seats and you can continue talking outside in the cafe after uh, today's service, which has been an awesome service so far. Great to spend time in praise and worship together. And uh, I'd love to tell you about a few things that are going off in the life of the church and uh, as you gather to your seats. It's great to see Colin Meyer back in church this morning. Thank you, Lord, for bringing him back safe to us. And it's been great to see the community gathered together to support and Colin and Janice through this time. And we are so glad for the healing that's happening and continuing to happen in your life, Colin. We're grateful for all that God's been doing. So why don't we just welcome Colin back into church this morning. Give him a high five later on. But be gentle, though. Just a gentle high five later on. No bear hugs today. Hey, just before we move on into our next part of our service, I've got a couple of things I wanted to remind you of and let you know about in the life of the church, things that are happening that you are so invited to. And we want to keep you fully up to date with everything that's going on in the life of the church. And the first thing is this. We have our Play Cafe Easter Fun Day next weekend, or next Saturday morning at 9.30 a.m. here down at church. And we are using the play space and the upper paddock area and we're going to gather together Play Cafe happens across the week here at church and it's part of just who we are to serve and outreach into our community and the Play Cafe do an incredible job uh, of doing such that and uh, we've, we, we've seen I think it's like 800 families connected in the life of the Play Cafe and they, they do a great why don't we just encourage our Play Cafe Fiona's here our Play Cafe manager this morning as well doing a great job hi Fiona she loves to be embarrassed 
Matthew loves the limelight. Uh, but those guys doing a brilliant job. Uh, and uh, last year, you may have come to the Play Cafe event last year in November, just in the lead up till Christmas. I think we had like over 400 people here in the play space area and uh, did an incredible job. I think there's face painting and a petting zoo and all kinds of crazy things going on. And so you're so invited to that. And uh, do you know for us what that is? It's an expression of our heart for our community. The expression is this, that we love and we care for and we're passionate about those mums and dads being connected into community and it's an expression of Play Cafe and we're looking forward to that next weekend. I think it's just $6 per family, not per person, per family. So if you've got 42 children, it's, it's, a, it's a bargain. It's an absolute bargain. If you've got one child, still a bargain. This is still a bargain. Uh, I haven't done the maths on that though. Um, $6 divided by 42. That's a bargain, equals bargain. That's what that equals. And so that's next Saturday. And you, look, there's still time as well if you're thinking, hey, you know, I've, I've, I've not got small kids anymore, but I want to be involved in this and serve in the life of the church in this way as part of our outreach. You are so welcome to be part of that team. Come and see one of the Next Steps team afterwards and we can get you connected in to be part of the welcome team or the car park. There's so many different ways in which you can serve the community and Play Cafe this weekend will be one of those ways that you can do that. And we have a great, very generous team here, always giving and uh, we're great to serve God's house that way. Uh, we've got our Easter weekend coming up as well and yeah. not, not so distant future and I'm really, really looking forward to uh, sharing more detail uh, with you about this is what we call is our Easter weekend experience. We start on Good Friday together with a for a one hour service and uh, this was incredible last year for those that were here. A great opportunity for you to continue inviting your friends and family along as well. So that's on the Friday. And then Easter Sunday we have 1 a.m. service. Just what no not a 1 a.m. service. We have a 1 a.m. service that day. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's, uh, I'm not sure, not sure on the attendance of that service. Uh, but we do that for those doing day shifts. and uh, So you can come to our 1 a.m. service. We also have one at 9 a.m. as well. Uh, <laughs> for those that, those that like to lay in, you know, we've got a 9 a.m. for you. So the 1 a.m. is for those that are up early. Um, so we have, we have a 9 a.m. service on Easter Sunday, and so we're merging our 8.30 and 10.30 together. As I mentioned already, arrive at 8.30, you'll be early. Arrive at 10.30, you'll not be early. And uh, it's gonna be a great Sunday morning together. Um, and that's again a one hour service and then we have a 5 p.m. service as well. Our 5 p.m. service, we called it Altar and this isn't a great, gonna be something we're doing a little bit different. We're gonna gather together for a night of worship. It's gonna be up in the youth center. I know the team have been working so hard on it the entire weekend and we're creating a place where we can experience the presence and the power of God while celebrating all that Jesus has done for us. And so we're looking forward to our Easter weekend together. Look, the last thing I'll say before I talk about any other 1am services, we have launched today our, uh, our new song. How good. Come on, give the team a hand. Come on, this is, this is Lighthouse Church. This is us. This is us launching this song together and our team have been doing a great job in the background here. And we're so grateful for new sound coming out of our worship team and an expression of who we are here at Lighthouse Church and glorifying God and the songs that we write together. And this, we're looking forward to this being listened to by many people across many churches and many places around the world as well. And so uh, we are uh, releasing that is released today, this morning. You get it on those platforms behind me. And uh, would you like just to hear another sneak peek though? Why don't we just enjoy that for a moment? Check out the screen.
Oh, isn't that a taste of heaven? It just makes every molecule in my being vibrate, you know? I, you know? Yeah. When Jesus said, if you won't worship me, I'll get the stones to worship. And you begin to think that's what it's like. Anyway, giving, I'll just get my notes ready. <laughs> yeah, we had an election yesterday for the local council. I have awesome news. The number of women candidates who won is amazing. Have a look at it. Something like three quarters of the successful candidates were women. Go girls, right? And guys, I'm sorry. We'll be dressing up in our sparkly pink suit saying, I'm just Ken. <laughs> oh dear. I get so tempted to sing this song, but Ryan's so much better than me. Hallelujah. Anyway, back on track. The Australian, yesterday, I, I occasionally get it to read, and you know, it said, looking at Queensland, it said the two issues on people's minds were number one, cost of living. That's, I'm sure that's no news to anyone. And secondly, crime. And what was interesting is they broke it up by age. So the younger you were, the more the cost of living was biting you. And the older you were, the more crime was a concern. Interesting, isn't it? Cost of living, financial issues, crime, personal safety, safety of possessions. And that's what the world's looking at at the moment. But I've got good news for you. You know, there's an answer for that. And the first part of it is keep your eyes on Jesus. You know, we can look at that. I mean, we don't need to be stupid and ignore it. But by faith, keeping our eyes on Jesus is the key. And the second thing, never stop giving. Give to God. Give to friends. Give to the household of faith and give even to your enemies. Never stop giving. Now, you might think that's just me saying that. So let's check it in the Word of God. And who better to read about but the Father of faith. Now, we think Abraham had it easy, but he lived in a neighbourhood that was unsettled. There, in Genesis uh, 14, it says he lived in an area where there were 10 kings. And you can think of these kings as like the King of Caboolture, King of North Lakes, King of Castledine. That's a good one. You know, they, they weren't Genghis Khan or anything, but they were all these little city states. And the supreme king at that time decides he's going to go on a slaycation. So he's off to feed his enemies, right? And while he's away, some of the other kings under him got a bit restive. You know, when the cat's away, the mice will play. So they rebel. And one of those kings was king of Sodom, where Lot, the nephew of Abraham, lived. And of course, the Supreme King hears about the rebellion, races back, sorts them out and plunders, because that's what you did in those days. You, he plunders their possessions and their people. And of course, part of the plunder was Lot and his family. And off they go. So this is kind of the, the context of Abraham's life. It was pretty unsettled, pretty risky. And he had managed to stay out of the fray. But when he hears his nephew's been kidnapped by this king, he gets his men together and off they go. And they do an ambush at night and win. A wonderful victory. Get all those possessions, donkeys, camels, gold, silver, you know, the usual plunder that we get. And he gets Lot back and takes them back home. And in Genesis 14, it says, as he came home, it says, then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God most high and he blessed Abram saying, Blessed be Abraham by God most high, creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who delivered your enemies into your hands. 
And Melchizedek's kind of an enigmatic figure. He's, he, you don't learn much about him other than, you know, Hebrew 7 is where perhaps it's most talked about. But he's a pre-Christian picture of Jesus Christ. And you see it in the fact he brought out to Abraham bread and wine, his body and blood. And it's a picture of Christ coming out to meet Abraham and he blesses him. And what does Abraham do? The, the next scripture says, then Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. So as he gets blessed by this figure of Christ, Abraham's act of worship, his response to that blessing is to give a tenth of all he had. Amazing act of worship. Now, he still had plenty of plunder and loot. And the king of Sodom says, uh, you can keep the plunder. I just want my people back. But Abraham says, and this is a real key thought, what I have doesn't come from you or anyone else. It comes from God. He's my provider. He's who I look to for success in life. You can have your plunder back. I'm not taking one part of it. Isn't that amazing? And he just hands it all back. And then, you know, soon after that, the Bible says in Genesis uh, 15, the word of the Lord comes to Abraham in a vision and God says to him, Abraham, I know you live in difficult times, but don't be afraid. I am your shield. I am your very great reward. Isn't that wonderful? And that's comfort to us. No matter how unsettled the times, if we're looking to Jesus Christ, who rose from the grave and reigns on high, he's the creator of all, then what have we got to fear? We can go to him and he'll look after us. Amen. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we thank you that you are our provider. You are our shield. You are our very great reward. And Lord, we just put before you all our concerns, all our lack. And Father, we thank you that Jesus takes our battle on and through him, we have victory in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's stand, shall we, and uh, continue to worship.
Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church. Let's give him a hand of praise this morning. Let's thank him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hey, why don't you reach out to God this morning? Wherever you are this morning, why don't we, let's reach out to God just in these moments right now. Lord, we thank you this morning. God, you are Lord of all. You are holy. You are set apart. Lord, this morning, Lord, we come today, we set our hearts worshipping You, that You are Lord of all. And God, here this morning, we give You thanks and we give You praise, God, for who You are. Lord, this morning, I pray, Father, that in these moments right now, God, I pray, Father, You would do what only You can do. Father, that You, Lord, this morning, that You would bring revelation, You would bring life, You would bring fresh hope. You would bring healing. You would bring vision. And Lord, we love You and we bless You in the Name of Jesus. Come on, let's give the Lord one more great hand of praise. He's awesome. He's so good. So good. Amazing. Hey, uh, what a song. And tonight, uh, we have the opportunity tonight to uh, not just have a, a service and a night of worship, but to release the song that we've been singing for the last sort of couple of months in our church, that song we just worshiped there together. And uh, I think this is this is a significant song. You know, um, uh, end of last year, Wendy and I got to go down to C3 Hobart. It's a great church down there, friends of ours. And uh, we were in the church that morning, preached in a couple of services, and they were, they were singing uh, a song that we'd written about a year or so ago. Uh, pastors Chris and Beck, who are our inner city location pastors, incredible song called Witness, which many of us here would know that song, and they were singing out there. Then in the afternoon, we went out to one of their locations, a little rural town called the Hewan Valley, where they started a church service out there. And it was in a, it was in a scouts hall with an acoustic guitar and a keyboard and uh, timber floors and there was about 40 or 50 people in there and uh, this song Witness had become like an anthem this is what the pastor was saying it became like an anthem for the church in fact they were getting so excited by it I'd never seen it before but on this scout hall literally the percussion was them stamping their feet to the song uh, Witness as we were doing it and I was just like wow what incredible I tell you what uh, I love the fact that there are these songs that are coming out of our church because I tell you, when God moves, many times the first way He moves is actually through the songs that He puts in our hearts and in our church as well. And I just wanted to spend a moment just to thank and honour our incredible worship team uh, to Will and Holly and all the team who have, who have been uh, labouring. And, and I tell you, they do. Every, every uh, I think it's every second week, they get together, songwriters get together. That song we, we wrote was, was a collab written by a whole bunch of our team there together. And there I've heard some of the songs that are about to come out there as well. So tonight, if you're not normally coming to a 5 p.m., come to a 5 p.m. tonight. We're gonna have an incredible night. It's gonna be an encounter night. It's gonna be a night of worship and uh, it's gonna be a night too to celebrate and honour as well. So just once more, come on, let's thank our team. Would you do that? Thank you guys. Incredible, incredible. And I uh, just wanted to also say too, with Stuart uh, Andrassi here and uh, is Stuart Ray. Oh, sorry, I said Andrassi. Oh, that's right. Yeah, anyway, that, they're just they're part of the Andrassi family. Stuart's been with us here for the last few months. I think it's your last Sunday, right, before you head back and just part of our family here as well. And uh, hey, Stuart, I just felt like uh, the Lord would say this morning, this is probably something that's already in your heart anyway, but I just felt like there's a scripture which uh, God says, He says, behold, I do a new thing. And I just want to encourage you in that and uh, that God's doing something new. And I just felt like, Stuart, there's such a sense and it's only just begun in you, but there's new vision there's new hope, there's new dreams. There, there's such a sense that, you know what, you, you've, there's so much you've accomplished through your life and you've done in your life, I know, and you've been in the local church for years and you've had an impact, not just in your own family, but in the lives of many, many others. But I just felt like God would say, almost like there's a new chapter and it's like, you're gonna be amazed. You're gonna be surprised, astounded at what God's gonna do. And I just see that there are new things that God is doing, gonna put in your heart. There are new things that God's gonna put in front of you. And you're gonna see the goodness of God every single step of the way. God's good, amen. Come on. As 
As you grab your seat this morning, please high five at least three people and just say, hello, good looking. Would you do that this morning? Just say, hello, good looking. Yes. I'm so excited for Easter, so excited for our 1 a.m. service. That's fantastic to announce that. Yep. <laughs> Great. Tony, you're on preaching that one. That's fantastic. Thanks, thanks for offering that up. I'll be seeking the Lord from the quietness of my bedroom. But uh, no, that's fantastic. Looking forward to Easter together. Good to be back. If you've uh, been away for a couple of weeks uh, over in uh, the United States of America, it was great. We went over there with a, a crew from C3 Australia, pastors from around our movement uh, to a conference called Exponential Conference. Uh, pretty unlike any conference I've been to. What was so great about this conference is uh, there was about 6,000 delegates there from all around the world. Believe it or not, we're in a church called First Baptist Orlando, which seats 6,000 people in their main auditorium. They were just constructing their young adult centre, which would be around about the size of our whole facility, which they were about to. That, it's just, just the size and scope was just next level. But what really impacted me the most is this church conference was a bit unique. It's not denominational. So we were there with people from every denomination and movement from around the world, and its focus was on church planting. And what was incredible about it was that this was not, even though it was based in America, it wasn't based in America, if this makes sense. We had pastors and people who were leading phenomenal churches, but also phenomenal church planting movements around the world. One of the most impacting ones is uh, a main session was done by a pastor in the Ukraine and talking about the move of God that's happening in Ukraine. And you know, when he said it started, he said, uh, we, were, we were fighting in a battle in terms of like trying to get people to church. And he said that uh, obviously when, when everything started in the war that they're currently in, he said, uh, it's like God has moved. He says, our, our churches are filled. He says, we cannot start enough churches right now. And, uh, and just the work of God. And it's just remarkable. I mean, many times we, we get to have our own local context, but we got to hear about how God's moving through China. I got to hear about how God's moving in Ukraine, how God's moving in South America. We got to hear about, uh, we had an Indian pastor there sharing about uh, like just incredible things that God's doing in that way. And I love it because uh, be able to sit there in that environment and just hear about the bigness of the kingdom of God. And how he's moving across every culture, across every nation, across every people group uh, was one of the most remarkable things. And then to be sitting there beside people from, didn't matter what your denomination was, no one cared. Uh, we're all there together because it was like, guess what? Jesus said, go on to all the world, make disciples of all nations, build my church. And that we had people together side by side and just encouraging each other in that, which was, which was so good. And so uh, good to be back, uh, good, to, good to be into, I think it's week four of the series. Who's been enjoying the series, The Best of Friends? Have you been enjoying that? We really felt in our hearts, I know as a team, that this was the, the, probably the key theme we wanted to really preach into, we really wanted to speak into, we really wanted to strengthen in the life of our church, understanding that, you know, many years we would always do a, uh, like a season or a, or a theme on relationships. And we would talk about marriage, we'd talk about those sort of things, which have been great. But we really wanted to dive into and talk about what is the God-given gift of friendship and why that's so important in our life and why that is such a big part of the vision of our church, that we're a church that gathers more than just on Sundays. There are actually a church that's called to be a community of faith, that we're called to build friendships, life-giving friendships with one another. And so the message title uh, for this morning is called The Sum of Us. Turn to your neighbour and say, The Sum of Us. The Sum of Us. And I want to just talk about this idea of us. Us. Because here's why. In the culture that we live in, we hear very little about us and we hear a lot about me and I. If you'd have to say a comment on the culture that we live in, particularly Western culture, is it is incredibly eye-centric. It's incredibly me-focused. But it's fascinating if you just start to read through the Bible, particularly if you start to read through the New Testament, you'll start to see that there's actually not that much about I and me and myself, but there is a lot about we and about us and about togetherness in the Bible. 
In fact, one of the great ways to understand the Bible is to look at phrases or themes in the Bible that continue to repeat themselves. Do you know there is one phrase in the Bible, it's a two-word phrase that's repeated over and over again, Old Testament and New Testament. But in the New Testament alone, this phrase repeats itself 59 times. Do you know what that phrase is? One another. There are 59 separate scriptures in the New Testament, which most of them are specific commands telling us how to relate to one another. I'll give you a few of them. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up. So these are going to give us pictures of what the, the best of friends is all about. This is going to give us a real picture about why friendship is actually a gift from God. And, and, and the type of friendship that God wants us to actually demonstrate to others. It says, encourage one another, build one another up. Hebrews eleven twenty four 24 says, let us consider how we may spur one another on. That literally word means incite one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. Galatians five thirteen says, serve one another in love. Ephesians 5.21 says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Romans 15.14 says, teach one another. Uh, Romans 12.10 says, be devoted to one another in love, honour one another above yourselves. Ephesians 4.32, which I, I, this would be one of the, the best scriptures for, for culture today. It says, be kind to one another. How many of you know we need a little bit more? Be kind to one another. Not cancel one another. Be kind to one another. Forgiving one another as God and Christ forgave you. Here's a, here's a great picture of friendship. Galatians 6 verse 2, bear one another's burdens. Or that idea it says, it says carry each other's burdens. 1 Peter 4 verse 9 says, be hospitable to one another. We could go on through all of those, but I tell you, here's the key idea that, that I, I want to help us land on today. And this is exactly what Jesus taught us about love, about relationships, about friendships. And that's this, the way that people will know that you are a follower of Jesus is in the way in which you love and treat them. Can I just say that again? The way that people will know that you're a Christian will be in the way in which you love and treat them. Jesus was asked, there's a great scene in the Gospels, Jesus asked a question by a religious expert. This expert was actually trying to trip him up. So he was trying to get him to say something which would get him into trouble. And this religious expert asked him and says, like, help me figure out the Scriptures, Jesus. There's all these commandments. There's all these laws. Which one of those commands is the greatest? And Jesus' response was fascinating. He said, I can't give you one commandment, but I'll give you two, and they're both inseparable. Matthew 22, verse 37, he says, Love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. But then Jesus introduced a concept that was new to them. You see, they had heard about loving the Lord your God. But now Jesus is about to teach them there's a second commandment and you cannot separate it from the first commandment. And he said, and the second is like it, love your neighbour as yourself. You see, when Jesus was saying, love your neighbor as the second commandment, what he was doing was teaching them that actually part of our faith is, first of all, that we need to have the vertical part of our faith happening, which is loving God and God loving us. So that's where it starts. But he said, there's a second part and you cannot separate it from the first. He said, you've got to have the vertical part, but you've also got to have the horizontal part. You see, the horizontal part of our faith is how we love people. Jesus says you can boil it all down to loving God and loving people, but you must have both. In other words, Jesus is saying you don't have the gospel without both. You don't have the cross without both. Jesus is saying if we love God, then it's going to show up in how we love and treat other people. John 13, verse 35, Jesus actually said even more clearer. He says, a new command I give you. So this is a new command. Love one another. As I have loved you, you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples by loving one another. Jesus saying it again, the way that people will know 
that we follow Jesus is by the way that we love and treat them. The way that people will know that we're a Christian will actually be in the relational qualities that we live out. Do you know, even the, even the Holy Spirit or being baptized or filled with the Holy Spirit shows up in Him transforming our relationships. Did you know that? Galatians 5 verse 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. What do all of those things have in common? Do you know the answer is? They are all relational qualities. So when you and I are filled with the Holy Spirit, the fruit or the evidence that we are walking in the Spirit or we are filled with the Holy Spirit is, is these relational qualities begin to come out of our life. Qualities that weren't there before. Things like love and joy. And we have peace and patience. You see, when the Holy Spirit fills us, one of the purposes is He wants to transform the way that we relate to other people. The evidence that we are filled with the Holy Spirit will always be seen in how we relate and love other people. And what the Holy Spirit wants to do most is the Holy Spirit wants to help us love people the same way that Jesus loves them. You know, I learned this when I'm so thankful in our church, the first week that I came to church. I got saved. You, some of you have heard this story before. I got saved in our church in 1993, first year out of high school. A friend of mine who I'd grown up knowing uh, since I was a kid invited me to church. He'd just given his heart to Christ. He began to share Jesus with me. He invited me and invited me and invited me. After about 17 no's, I eventually relinquished and said, yes, I will come. How many of you are thankful for friends like that? I'm so thankful for that friend. He, he, he's, he lives out near uh, Toowoomba. Now we talk on the phone. He's still following Jesus. I am so thankful that a friend loved me like that to share Jesus with me and invite me to church. And when I came to church for the first time, I'd never been to a church like this, never experienced anything remotely like this. I'd had some traditional church experience. But when I came to church, it was like, oh my gosh, God is in this place and I cannot deny it. And as the service went on, the worship and the preaching, it was like God was just, I knew it. He was working in my heart. And then at the end of the service, I had an opportunity to respond. And I, my hand just went straight up. I said, yes, I, I want to I wanna receive Christ into my life. And I tell you, the moment I did that, man, it was like God's love was just poured into my heart. And God completely changed. I had an encounter with the love of God. And I want to encourage you today. Maybe you've been coming to church and you've never had an encounter with God. Can I tell you? One encounter with God can transform your life. The, you know, that, that one encounter completely changed the trajectory of my life, completely in that moment. But you know what? That was the first time I'd encountered the love of God. But after that service finished, I ended up going outside and they, they, uh, the, the service had finished. I began talking to some young adults my age and, and they very quickly were, they were super nice people and they invited me to something which I'd never heard of. It was called Connect Group on the following Wednesday night. And I had no idea. And I'm not a Christian. I don't know what connect groups are. They just said, it's at Gretel's place this Wednesday night. Come along. There'll be food. And then I'm like, who's Gretel? I don't know. But I said, come along. And, and, so, I, and so I got picked up by one of these guys uh, on that Wednesday to go to connect group, not knowing where I was going, just going to someone's house. Uh, now, you got to imagine I'm a uni student at the time, right? I'm living away from home, so money's a little bit short. And when I got there, they said there was going to be a supper. I didn't realize that Christian, that Christian word supper was actually a synonym for the word banquet. <laughs> How good are Christian suppers? Oh my gosh. I thought there was going to be a couple of, you know, ice vovos and maybe a couple of, there was like, it was a feast that was spread. Now I tell you, for a uni student, that was good news right there. I was like, this is great. And we ate food and I met a whole bunch of people. And, and someone just shared some, some stuff out of the Bible and we talked about that. Then we had a time of prayer together and it was incredible. And I tell you what stood out for me the most was that there was so much love and so much care, uh, so much uh, personal contact from people. Uh, there, were, there was encouragement there. There were people just helping me just with this very basics of understanding what a Christian actually is and what that looks like in my life. And, and I, I walked away that night and I realized it's actually, this is now in three days, this is the second time in the space of three days that I've encountered the love of God. The first one when I was sitting in a, in a, in a seat in a service, but the second time I encountered the love of God was actually through the people in the community of the church. 
And, and, and it, it became very, very clear to me that actually what God was showing me in this new life following Jesus, that following Jesus wasn't just going to be about me and God. Like that was an important part, but it wasn't going to finish there. That following Jesus was actually going to transform my relationships. It was going to have a significant impact on, on the friendships that would be uh, around my life. See, what God was showing me then, I didn't probably have the language for it back then, but what God was showing me back then, actually it was both horizontal, but it was also vertical as well. That God was actually setting me into community. He was setting me into relationships. He was actually setting me into this thing called a spiritual family, which in the Bible it says is the church. And what I came to understand really quickly was it was important for me that I step towards those relationships and those friendships and this new community of faith that was around my life. In Psalm 68 verse 6, it says God sets the solitary in families. That's actually a scripture for every one of us. Is God takes the solitary you and I. Like our, when we're just, we're, we're, we've just been walking our own way and doing our own thing. And then God comes into our life. And then we have this moment where, where we, we, we begin this relationship with Jesus. But the outworking of that relationship, it says it here in Psalms, is that God wants to take our life and He wants to set us into family. He wants to set us into community. That we're not just a son and daughter of God walking our own way, doing our own thing. But now actually we're sons and daughters of God, but we're now part of this great family. We're now part of this great community that God wants to bring us into. You see, it's not about a solitary me anymore. It's about we and it's about us. And when God sees the church, it's about a togetherness. It's about family. It's about building community with each other. Psalm 122 verse 1 says this, I was glad when they said to me, let us go up to the house of the Lord. I was glad when who? They. They said it. Let us go up to the house of the Lord. Here's the question I want to put to you today. Who is your they? Who is your they? I was glad when they said to me, Let, let's go to church. Let's, let's, let's build community and friendship. Let's, 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 let's do life together. You know, there's a great story in the book of Mark chapter 2. Some of you had heard this story before. It starts with a, a story about a man who had, had a great physical need. He was paralyzed. And it says this, this is the setting of the scene. It says that uh, when Jesus returned to Capernaum uh, after some days, it was reported that he was in someone's home. So Jesus went to someone's home, right? It says many people were gathered together in this home. In fact, it was packed. There was no more room, not even at the door. And Jesus was preaching to them. And then it, then it kicks into this scene. It says, and they came bringing to Jesus a paralytic man. He was carried by four men. So there's five of them. It says, they came. Then it says, and when they could not get near Jesus because of the crowd, do you know what they did? They climbed up onto the roof of this house. They removed the roof above him. And when they had made an opening in the roof, they let down the bed on which the paralytic man lay. I don't know if this was ropes and pulleys. I don't know if there was a trampoline involved. I don't know. But somehow, some way, they made a way for their friend to come near to Jesus. And I love this because I reckon this is one of the most important scriptures that you could find in the New Testament. It says, and when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic man, son, your sins are forgiven. Then in verse 11, then he says to him, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed and go home. And he rose and immediately picked up his bed. He was healed and he went out before them all and they were all amazed and glorified saying, we have never seen anything like this. So, so this man, he was forgiven. So he, he experienced salvation. He experienced healing. And Jesus commended, not an individual, no, Jesus commended their faith. This, 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 this friendship group. You know, 
as I said before, we, we, we live in a culture where, where so much has been individualized. But even when Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray, he said to them, I want you to pray like this. And the first words he said were, our Father. Not, don't pray, don't say my Father. Say our Father. Why? Because Jesus was pointing us to this, that as the church, we are, we are called to pray together. We're called to pray for one another. We're called to draw near and worship God together. When the Holy Spirit fell, when, when, when the church was literally birthed, it didn't just happen because an individual came together. The Bible says, when the day of Pentecost came, Acts chapter 2, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven. It filled the house where they were sitting. The question this morning is, who is your they? Who are the people around your life where you can pray for one another, encourage one another, build one another up and help and take the other person's needs to Jesus for them? In Mark chapter 2, this paralyzed man, obviously, right, obviously could not get to Jesus on his own. But I love the story because it was his they who stepped up for him. It was their faith in action that actually brought their friend to Jesus. They brought his needs to Jesus and he received forgiveness and healing. And here's the truth. We're all gonna have a day when we need someone else's faith. We're all gonna have a day when someone needs your faith. For the paralyzed man, it seemed obvious because he had obvious physical needs. But the truth is, we are no different to him. We need each other because there are storms that we walk through. There are, there are valleys uh, that we walk through in life. And what we need in those moments, we need the faith, the love, the encouragement and the support that comes from friends around us. You know, many of us will, will know and love uh, a great family in our church, Callan and Beck. And we've been praying for them as they have uh, had some real difficulties uh, with the birth of their son, Samuel. And I just want to commend them. They were here uh, this morning. I want to commend them on their faith. I want to commend them on just their heart for God. I want to commend them on just their vulnerability to reach out to others. Uh, Callan put this post up on Facebook last week and it, it just really caught my attention. He just put this post up just publicly. He said, as we all know, the walk and story of not only Samuel, but, but Holly has been anything but smooth and easy. However, not only have we had amazing support from our community, but we have been able to see the body of Christ come together as a strong band. I wouldn't be able to tell you all the different backgrounds or denominations, people we don't even know that have been petitioning God. They are the hands and feet of God. To all my friends who are seeking and have not yet found a relationship with Jesus, there are all these people ready to stand with you and this amazing gift could be yours. Can we please thank God this morning. And I love this. Because what Callan has said is so true. One of the most amazing gifts that God has given us is the body of Christ. One of the most amazing gifts that God wants you and I to not only receive, but also be, is to be those kind of friends. And that's our heart, our vision. We want to build a church where it's about us, where it's about they. But to do that, we have to be intentional. We have to be intentional in our lives about building a strength of friendship and community that goes beyond Sundays. And what stands out about the they in Mark chapter 2 is that they knew their friend's needs and they did something about it. It says they carried him. It says they, they, they were willing, when they couldn't get there in the first time, they were willing to literally cut a roof open. They were willing to do whatever it took to bring their friend and his need to God because they had faith that God could do a miracle in his life. You know what? We are called to be the best of friends like that. What does that look like? We are called to know each other. We're called to share our needs. We're called to pray for one another. We're literally called to carry each other's burdens. We are called to help bring others to Jesus. I want to ask you this morning again, who is your they? And here's what I found in life is that our they at times in life changes. Do you know one of the greatest gifts that God brings into our life when he's ready to do something new in our life is often a friendship. It's often a new relationship. In the Bible, 
there's a, 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 a man by the name of David. He's King David. But at this stage in his journey, he's not yet a king. God's getting ready to position David into kingship before he can be ready to be positioned for kingship. Do you know what God does? He sends him a gift. It's a friend by the name of Jonathan. And this friendship was actually exactly what David needed at this time of his life. Do you know what Jonathan did as a friend? Jonathan encouraged David. Jonathan spoke life into him. Jonathan actually spoke the word of God over his life. Jonathan was actually used by God to strengthen him at times where, where David did not feel like he had the strength to carry on. 1 Samuel 23, 16, it said, And Saul's son, Jonathan, went to David and helped him find strength in God. How many of you are thankful for friends like that? They will actually know it. there's a time in life where they need to come closer to you in order to give strength. And how many of you know God calls us to be those kind of friends as well? That actually where we know the needs, we know the, the life that someone's walking through, we know at those times where we need to step towards them and help them find strength and encouragement and hope in God. And, and, and I know that church for the last probably eight weeks, you've heard us every single week talk about groups. You're probably like, I'm overhearing about groups. I, I get that. But I'll say that the reason that we talk about groups I'll tell you a reason we don't talk about groups this way. We don't talk about groups because there are people here who need more activity in their schedule. I'm not, we're not talking about groups. You're like, geez, I find during my week, I've just got so much free time right now. And uh, I wish the church would just have more activity for us to do. That's not it. We, we don't try to, we're not trying to fill your calendar. That's not it. No, no, we, we, the reason that we, we're encouraging our church I know so many have already done this, but the reason we're encouraging our church to step towards groups and to step towards these relationships is because we know how God uses those relationships in our life and how God can use us in the lives of others to do something powerful and profound. God's supply line to our lives is relationships. And that's why we do it. We want to build relationships. It's not just about a quantity of relationships. It's not about how many I know on social media, but it's about a depth of connection. It's about relationships where you and I are real and authentic with each other, but also mixed with faith, hope, and love, where we are pointing and encouraging each other towards the plans and the purposes and the hope that we have in Christ. I want to get the musicians up this morning. Do you know, I think like... The, the greatest challenge, perhaps, the greatest obstacle that we all deal with when it comes to having these type of friendships would be summed up in the word vulnerability. To have these kind of relationships where we know each other's needs, where we pray for each other, we, we have to be willing to be vulnerable, right? Do you know what vulnerability is? It's simply a hard attitude. It really is. I actually think it works this way. When you and I learn how to be vulnerable with God, it's so much easier to begin to be vulnerable with other people. When we realise that we don't have to put on a mask for God or we don't have to put on some kind of image for God, that actually we can be honest and, and real with God, we can be raw with God. And actually many times in those places, we, we, we meet the mercy and the grace and the goodness of God. Vulnerability is a hard attitude that just simply says, you know what, I don't have it all together. Actually, life might even be a bit messy right now. I've got some struggles in my life. That's vulnerability. You're saying that this is, this is life. We want to build a culture. We're intentional about building a culture in our church, in our friendships, in our groups, where it's not about projecting an image. It's not about trying to keep up appearances, but it's about relationships that are real, that are authentic, but are faith-filled. You know, back to, to my first experience with groups in this church, I, I went to Gretel's uh, Connect group. Some of you would know Gretel. And uh, she, anyway, we, I started going to that group. And the great thing about that group, can I tell you today, so many of the people I first went to group with, they're, they're still my friends today. Like a lot of them live in all different parts of Australia. They're going to local churches and we're still friends today. How cool is that? But um, I remember a few months into my Christian journey, and I was just starting off and uh, there was God was working in a whole bunch of different ways in my life. And I found that when I came to Christ, there were some things that God just instantly, like in a moment, just set me free from. But there were some other things that I was just working on. 
And I tell you, one of those things was actually I was about three or four months into being a Christian and I was, I was, I was smoking. I'd been smoking before I was a Christian and, and I just hadn't been able to, to deal with it. I hadn't been able to ditch it. I'd you know, ask God and be prayed for or whatever, just in altar call responses. And it was still there. It was bugging me a bit. Anyway, most people had left this connect group. One of the leaders of the connect group was there and uh, he just began to talk and said, hey, Andrew, how you doing? I said, yeah, pretty good. And then he, uh, he changed the subject real quick. And then he looked at me and he just said, um, hey, Andrew, are you still smoking? That became a shock to me. I thought no one knew. I thought, oh, perhaps they could smell it on me. I don't know what that is. But I was like, hey, Andrew, are you still smoking? And I was like, at that moment, can I tell you? I knew that actually that person wasn't asking me that question from a place of judgment. They were asking me that, pre- that question from a place of love and care. And instantly I knew that I needed to be honest in my response. And I said, yes, I am. The next question really stunned me though, because that person asked me that que- this question said, do you want to give up? I thought for a second, I said, yes, I do. Yes, I do. He said, well, I can help you. And that person just for the next couple of minutes began to explain. I just recently been baptized in the Holy Spirit. That person began to explain how the Holy Spirit can help us overcome our weaknesses, can help us overcome temptation. Began to show me some things about how I could activate these gifts of the Holy Spirit in my life. Mainly it was praying in the Spirit to be able to resist temptation in my life. Gave me some practical advice and then just said to me, but here's the most important thing. I'm gonna pray with you and I'm gonna call you every day. We're gonna do this journey together. Do you know, over the next few weeks, that's exactly what happened. God actually worked in my life, set me free in this area of my life. And here's the thing which I came to understand. It was at this moment that God wanted me to be open and vulnerable so that I could see that God wanted to work through the relationships in my life to bring freedom and healing. It was actually vulnerability in that conversation that led to a breakthrough in my life. Do you know the Bible teaches us this same principle? It says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What it's saying there is when we confess our sins to God, where this is the vertical part of our relationship, we receive forgiveness from God. But then James takes it the next step. James 5, 16 says, Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. So what James is telling us is that we confess our sins vertically to God to receive forgiveness, but we need to actually confess our faults to one another because God will work through those relationships. God will work through the prayers that are prayed for us to bring healing into our life. And this is the biblical purpose of community. It's that you and I could actually build these relationships around our life because it's actually through those relationships that God can use those friendships to bring freedom and healing into our life. Why are having relationships, why are having friendships like this that are real and authentic, that that are filled with faith and prayer, why are they so important? Why does the Bible speak about them so much? The answer is so simple, but so clear. Because God works powerfully through them. It says in the next verse, it says, confess your sins to one another, pray for one another that you may be healed. Then it says, the prayer of a righteous person, a righteous friend has great power as it's working. So the Bible here is now saying to us, when we build friendships, when we build community like this around our life, where we begin to have an openness around our life, but we pray for one another, it says, guess what? There's great power that God begins to move in our life through those relationships. How good is that? Can we give God a great hand of praise? He's awesome this morning. What I'd love you to do right now, would you stand up to your feet this morning? I just love you in this moment right now. Would you just close your eyes? We got about five minutes before we hand back the service this morning. I just love every eye closed across this place. And I felt this morning, and we're gonna, we're gonna worship in a moment just together. But I felt this morning that the Holy Spirit wanted to do some work in relationships in our lives. You know, one of the, one of the most important things that I believe transforms relationships, literally changes relationships, is the life and the power of the Holy Spirit. Letting the Holy Spirit into our relationships, letting the Holy Spirit into 
sometimes our struggles or, or even in, in, the, in the nature of our relationships, when you let the Holy Spirit go to work, I tell you, He can transform them. I felt this morning, just as I was praying into this service this morning, just a, a very simple word. This is for some people here this morning and I'm gonna ask you to respond in a minute. And you've been struggling. There's a particular relationship. Even this morning as we've been preaching in friendships and relationships, it's just something that keeps coming to your mind. Maybe it's in family. Maybe it's in friendship. Maybe it's at work right now. But there, there's, a, there's a relationship right now in your life and, and you, you may be experiencing some tension. There may be some distance. Maybe there's just a whole bunch of stuff from the past that just seems to be something that, that doesn't ever seem to be removed. And I just felt like the Holy Spirit says this morning to you that this is a moment right now where you need to give it to God, where you need to surrender it to God. You know, uh, we're gonna have a moment where I'm just gonna invite people, if that's you, just to come forward. Maybe you need to do that as a couple. Maybe that's as an individual this morning. You're saying, God, I wanna give it to you because here's the word, I believe it's so important, surrender. Do you know everything God does in our life always starts when we surrender. Salvation begins when we surrender our lives to Christ. Every miracle, every transformation, every change that God does starts with surrender. We're gonna open up, this is in a moment, we're gonna open up this altar this morning. Do you know what an altar is? An altar is a place where we surrender things to God. And maybe this morning for you, maybe it's a moment you need to say, God, I need to give this to you. I wanna give you a scripture this morning. I felt God give this to me today for some people. It says this, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him, surrender to Him, and He will make your paths straight. Listen, I wanna encourage you this morning. When you give it to God, God will begin to lead you. God will begin to transform you. The Holy Spirit will begin to go to work. So what I want you to do right now, all across this place, would you reach out to God? Butch, I'd love you to lead us right now, just to some worship. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So what I wanna do right now, if that's you this morning, you're saying, hey God, this morning, there's a relationship. I need to surrender it to God. We're gonna worship just for a couple of minutes. I want you to come forward right now. I want you to stand up here on the front. This is gonna be a moment right now where the power and the life of the Holy Spirit is gonna go to work. Come on, let's praise this morning. Let's worship.
Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Lord. Can I have every eyes closed once more? Maybe you're here this morning. Maybe you've never stepped towards the greatest friendship that you and I could ever experience. And that's a friendship with Jesus. Jesus even said these words. He says, I no longer call you servants. I now call you friends. Jesus invites every single one of us to know Him, to begin a relationship with Him. What I love about the Gospel story is that God has done it all through Jesus to make that friendship possible for every single person. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever would believe in Him would not perish but have eternal life. Eternal life is not just heaven. Eternal life can start the very moment you invite Christ into your life where you can know the God who loved you, the God who gave Himself up for you, and the God who through the cross made a way for you and I to have relationship with God. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, Jesus stands, He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. I sense this morning, there's several people here this morning, God's knocking on the door of your heart, even right now. Would you let Him in? Would you let Jesus back into your heart again? Would you let Him into your life? He will change you from the inside out. He will make you brand new. The Bible says all we need to do is come with this heart attitude, it's called repentance. We're saying, God, I have sinned and I need Your forgiveness. I need Your love. If that's you this morning, I'm gonna pray a prayer, but I'd love to personally include you. There's a moment, a decision. You're only ever one prayer away from a brand new life in Jesus. And I'd love to include you on that prayer. Or maybe you've prayed this prayer before, but you know that you've drifted away. Well, this morning's that morning for you to come back to Him. Just where every eyes closed across this place, if that is you, I want you to be brave and bold right now. Would you just slip your hand up and say, yes, Pastor, that's me. Would you include me on that prayer this morning? And then you can put your hand back down. I'd love to pray for you this morning. Who is that? Thank you over there. Yes, I can see your hand. Who else is here this morning? I believe there's several more people. Thank you, buddy, over there. I can see your hand. Thank you up the back there. I can see your hand. Who else is here this morning? Thank you over there. I can see your hand. Who else is here this morning, even right now? I, my heart tells me there's some people here and you've slipped from relationship with God. Maybe it's been a, a season where you've drifted, but you know this morning, God's knocking on the door of your heart. If you would just open that door, God will come in. Let God change you. Let God's grace do the work. If that's you, just slip your hand up and say, Pastor, pray for me as well this morning. That's awesome. Would you say these words after me? Say, Lord Jesus, this morning, I open the door of my heart and I invite You in. Be my Lord and Saviour. God, forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean and make me new. And today, I put my trust in You, God, and promise to follow You with all my heart in Jesus' Name. And everyone said, Hey church, we had a whole bunch of people who said yes to Jesus. Come on, let's celebrate with them this morning. That's awesome. Hey, if you lifted your hand this morning, or maybe you didn't, but you know you should have done it. Hey, listen, I mean it when I say that this is about you and I doing life together with others. The Christian life, it starts with a personal decision, but it's outworked in community. And if that's you this morning, we have a Next Steps team. They're gonna, they're gonna come at the end of the service, have a conversation with you, give you a Bible, maybe pray with you, but we'd love to help you take your next steps on that journey of faith. Can we please give God a great, great clap this morning? He's awesome. Thank you, Jono. How good. Hey, come on, we thank Pastor Andrew for that message this morning as well. Come on, we show our appreciation. A great message brought there, a revelation for us today. And uh, look, just as we start to close this part of the service, um, you know, I just, I just felt urged to say this morning as well. If, if God is speaking to you, that if, that if there's a moment in your life where you're thinking, I actually want to deal with something here, God's really speaking to me. The Holy Spirit's talking to me about friendships and relationships in my life. What we've been learning is that when we share with one another, God brings a healing. And I think it's so important that if God's speaking to us today, that we're bold yes. and we're courageous enough 
to step out and speak to somebody that we trust. Speak to somebody about it because I know that when that happens, and I've experienced it in my life as well, that God brings a freedom, it brings a change, and it brings a lightness to your life. And uh, so my encouragement is today, speak, speak to somebody. Everything within you will be saying, no, no. If we can get beyond that, and my encouragement as well is step into those groups, step into those moments of relationship with people because we're in it for the long haul, right? We're doing this life together. So why don't we just thank God for his goodness. Thank God for those salvations this morning, for those decisions made today. And uh, we're going away from this place changed. So thank you, Pastor Andrew. It's great to have you back here in Bridgman Downs uh, from America. They're not having you. We've got you back here at Bridgman Downs. <clears throat> and so we're looking forward to our 1 a.m. service in a few weeks' time. And, uh, but hey, tonight, I encourage you, let's come here tonight to celebrate, to hear this new sound that we're launching uh, as we launch the new song together. Chad and Lewis will be here from City Point bringing a great message. And, uh, but for now, why don't you just enjoy the rest of your day here and uh, we'll see you out in the cafe. See you later. <laughs>